Good morning all. Praise the Lord. This morning my title is God's Attitude, God's Attitude Towards the Lost. The failure of the lost son when he leaves the father and his success when he returns. I'll take this message from book of Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32. If you want you can turn your turn to book of Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. That's in the gospel. Luke book of Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32. Before we read, I'd like to give an introduction about how the father greets the lost son. He hugs him, he kisses him, and he gets the fatted calf and greets. And there is a merry going on, like um, uh, there is a like celebration going on. And he gives his own robe and even his uh, ring to celebrate. Likewise, to any Christian, if you have been attending a church or if you know Lord Jesus Christ, this is one of the most familiar um, is, uh, passage in the Bible about the lost son. Its sentiment, its scope and its message of son's rebellion, a wasted life and a father's love is a lesson how God always stands and is waiting for you if you are lost this morning he always waits for you to come back to him and he greets you and he 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 hugs you if you this is the problem with us we don't tend to the lord we tend somewhere else for help and the lord is waiting with his open arms to greet us and forgive our sin and to bring into his own kingdom the background of this parable story, I will read this later on, but there are many precious words in English, such as, today we will talk about home. Home, if I said the word home, what will you relate with? If, if you are a criminal, you will relate, your home is in prison. If you are a senior citizen, you will relate it to a, a rest home, or a, when you get retired, you go to a rest home. But and and some of you think uh, you you are trying to go to hospital if you are injured and you spend your time there in hospital that's your hope but the real home is up there in heaven if you are saved Amen. if you believe jesus christ as your personal savior your real home is not on this earth but it is on the in the heaven and uh, here we see in book of luke the the reason this parable is taught was because some were not glad to see some sinners home. The devil doesn't want you to go to heaven. He wants to you to get busy on this earth and try to build a kingdom, a nice house, have nice cars on this earth. And he tries you, he drifts you away from the real home. So we will turn into into uh, book of Luke chapter 15 book of Luke chapter 15 and we will start reading from verses 11 to 32 book of Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32 I will read this verse and in book of Nehemiah when Ezra opened the word of God the book everyone stood so i request everyone to stand while i'm reading this passage the lost son and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that failed to me and he divided unto them his living and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. 
I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am, am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring thither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And when they began to marry, now his elder brother was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he had mul he had music and dancing. He had he had music and dancing. Sorry, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound, and he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never givest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said to unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet it was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Let's bow our head and pray. Dear, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the name of your precious Son, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your word, Lord Father, which you have given us to read and understand and make application in our daily life. We thank you for this verse. Lord, I pray that you give me your power and your wisdom and knowledge so that I can teach and preach your word this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The lost soul. Here we just read how this, this son, he was living with his father and he demanded his father the portion, his portion, his share of of the possession which he had in the in the property and and he forced himself through his will and he took his share and he went to a far country where he wanted to go on his own he didn't want to help his father he didn't want to work in his farm maybe he was a teenager he he, he was he wanted he was attracted to the brighter side of the world and like uh, he wanted greener pastures so he left his father he took all the money he, the father gave his share and he went to a far country when he went to the far country there was a famine in the land he blew all his money he blew all his money and he had nothing left you know what is a famine eh? famine is when there is no food where is there is a shortage of food and 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 in the country now in these days we will call inflation because of inflation rising of inflation the cost of goods and services go up and a person cannot afford to live unless he got a lot of savings or some savings to survive so this this boy had no employment over there and he started to find a job he found a job 
and someone, one of the citizens of that country, gave him an employment. He gave him an employment to work in his farm. And that farm was a pig farm. And over there he started to feed the, uh, the pigs with, uh, with the husk. And, and he also had no food and he started to eat, he start to eat the pig's food also. And in his conscience, he still had the conscience, praise the Lord. He thought to himself, in my father's house, there are servants who are living much in a much better condition. And what are, what I am doing here? So he started to think about his father, what he has done wrong in his life, and he wants to go back to his father. But he was a bit shamed here. Yes. The Bible says here, if we read here, that uh, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son and make me one of the highest servant. He goes to his father and he said, Father, I'm really sorry what I have done, and please forgive me. Don't treat me as a son, but treat me as a servant. But father was so loving that he hugged him, he kissed him, he gave a party, he threw a party, right? I'll, I'll try to make the message short because I have to cover something here. And there was a party and he, he welcomed his son with open arms, right? And, and uh, his elder brother was not happy, but here what we learn, what, what we learn here is the lost soul. The lost here is in twofold. God loses man. He disgrieves God. When you lose someone of your own, you grieve. The father was always grieving for his son. He was he must be waiting for his son. And when his he must be watching the road. One day my son will come back. One day my son will, will come back. And the son did come back because he was waiting. Likewise, God is waiting for you. God is waiting for you, for you to return to Lord. If you are lost this morning, you don't know your path, you are frustrated, you are confused, the Lord Almighty is waiting for you and He wants you to come back to Him. And here in John chapter 3 verse 16, it says that, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth him in Him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Amen. Right? You will not perish. The Son did not perish because He went to the Father. So likewise, you need to return to your Father. Who is your Father? God is your Father. Yes, you do have biological father here on earth, but he is the supreme, he is the almighty. The second point I want to make here is, man loses God. First one was God loses man, he grieves. Second one is man loses God. In the midst of our daily life, we are working, we are busy with our life, looking after our, after our children, working, making ends meet, but we fo forget. We l l take the wrong track. We take the wrong track. And Bible says that God <coughs> in, in Isaiah 59 verses 1 to 2, it says there, I won't read it, but I will tell you, the Lord says that my hands are not shortened, that He can't reach you. Because of your sins, because of your iniquities, God and man are separated. And God, when you sin, it's not like stealing purples or apples, but you are stealing God's time. You are not acknowledging God. That is a sin. In James, book of James, it says that for whom to know what to do good and do what it not, to him it is a sin. So you know what is good to serve the Lord, to read your Bible to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost. And if you are not doing this, you are committing a sin. And when you commit sin, Lord says that I turn my back. I turn my back and you can't see my face. I will not answer thee. 
when you have problems, God will not answer you. Right? He turns his back away. But the father in the book of Luke, he didn't turn back. He greeted him with open arms. Likewise, my friends, if you are lost this morning, I warn you, turn your back. God will turn his back to you. He wants you to get back. Get back. God has provided a man way back. How to get back? In book of Acts 16.31 says that if and in Romans 10.9 these are two verses uh, we'll read there. We'll turn to book of Acts chapter 16 and 31. If you turn to your Bible it says here that uh, I want you to see that's why I'm trying to read this uh, verse to you. Acts chapter 13 and verse 31. Right? This is from a Christ King James Version. It, uh, yeah. And they said, Believe on believe on Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. If you believe in Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved and you will be reunited with God the Father. God the Son and with the Holy Spirit you will have, you'll have a you will have a good fellowship with the Lord. Lord will start listening to you, my friends. So we'll turn to book of uh, Romans, Romans 10 and verse 9. It reads like this: That if thou confess, if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you believe this morning that God had power to raise his son Jesus Christ when he died, thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be saved. So God is providing a way back that you can get back again to him. Because of self-will, the son desired to go into a far country. Right? When we are young, we want to do things on our own. Right? We don't listen to our parents. We don't listen to the Holy Spirit. It, it tells us, it warns us, don't do this, don't do that, don't do, do this, don't. We want to do things on our own. And, and we later on mess ourselves. Right? He wanted to see the world. He wanted to eat, drink, marry. Right? Marry. M-E-R-R-Y. Not getting married, but marry. He wanted to have a party. Right? Self will cause many today to waste their lives on the things this world offers. They focus on the fleshly instead of spiritually. The world, the flesh and the devil will take you. The world, the flesh and the devil will take you right because of self will the son made demands to his father that father give me my portion and he went and blew it away this son is a sober reminder that self will separates one from the father right this morning as i am preaching now you must be thinking what I am saying. I am a fool. Yes, I am a fool for the Lord Jesus Christ. But your self-will will draw away from God the Father. You won't be able to fellowship, pray, communicate. You won't listen because you are listening to the noise of this world. What is everyone chasing this morning in this world? You know this world is of devil. The, the world is run and operated by devil. Satan. When Jesus come, Christ comes in second advent, he will rule and reign from Jerusalem. That is his kingdom. And we are the partakers of there and not of this world. The second point I want to make here is the grief of sin. Pain and anguish of sin. The, there are horrible consequences to sin. A ferment always follows a life of sin. 
This son had given in to his lust and jumped full blown into sin and now he's reaping the consequences. There's one of the most difficult lessons to get souls to this world to see. Sin has robbed his son. When sin has robbed you, you lose your dignity, your self-respect, your good name, purity. If you are a girl and you lost your purity because you were following some other man, following the world, due to peer pressures, you lost your purity and a good conscience. Here we see this, this boy still had the conscience that if I was at my father's house, I would be looked after better than the servant. Like the servants were having nice food than this lost man here. Right? Notice that at this time was seeking help from a far country instead of seeking help from his father. Yeah. Why you go? to a far country, why you are following this country's uh, whatever this country is telling you, whatever this world is telling you, what, uh, that's what I mean to say. The world says go and get a PhD, get a master's, get a honest degree, get busy, work for the Lord, hey, work for, for the devil, and but don't spend time. So today too many people are seeking help from the wrong sources. The divine is our only true source of help. Second Peter one three. We'll turn to Second Peter one three. Book of Peter is in New Testament, and if you turn to Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter one. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. It's, it says, According as this divine power unto you, through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. According to his divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto the life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Okay? The divine is the only true help, divine power. The sun is a reminder of the consequences of sin. And the last point I want to make here is the journey back. The journey back. If you if you read Luke 15 again, we'll turn there. Luke 15 verses 17 to 20. Luke 15 verses 17 to 20 we just read 17 to 20 and when he came to help to himself and when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him father I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called the son make me as one of thy hired seven and he arose and came to his father and when he was yet a great way off his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him no one will ever repent until he comes to himself no one will ever repent until he comes to himself. He came, his conscience told him that you are doing something wrong. You are in a problem, you are in danger. So he listened to himself. This morning, the Holy Spirit, the Lord must be talking to you. And you need to listen or else you will be like a lost son. Reflection is needed on our part. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. We must look honestly at ourselves. James 1, 22, verses 22 to 25. He remembered home and what he had left. He admitted that he had sinned. 
The three hardest words for a man to say is I have sinned. This morning, we all are sinners and whoever says he is not a sinner, he is lying to himself. Because the Bible says we are born with sin. Right? In our blood, there is sin. But when you believe Jesus Christ, your sin is washed away. Just like this boy, when he came back, the father gave him the robe. That robe, he was sleeping with pigs, eating pigs food. But when he came home, the father wrapped, gave him the white the robe. That robe is the robe of Jesus Christ. He will wash your sins. He will make you clean. Amen. Right? He admitted that he has sinned. This is the hardest thing for you this morning to repent and say I have sinned Lord and I want to get back we can't help ourselves until we admit we have, we have a need he realized his unworthiness he was unworthy he had money what happened he had a young life young teenager right when you are young you can break the walls but he he realized there is nothing Paul writes in Romans 7 that in our flesh dwelleth no good. Right? There is nothing good in our flesh. This helped him to realize the need of his father. This will help us to realize the need of our heavenly father. Amen. Matthew 5 3 says that he did something here. We'll turn to Matthew 5. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3. Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right? You need to be poor in your spirit. You need to come to the Lord, asking forgiveness so that He can take you on board. Right? Simply thinking about it will not get the job done. You need, you need him. You really need him. Matthew chapter 3 verse 8. This sin is wonderful reminder that we can come back to God. Right? If you don't come, if you don't repent, you'll perish. Some of you are sitting here. You must be thinking that you are not like that lost son. You got food in your home. You got everything. The Bible says that what shall profit the man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? You got everything. But if you don't know the Father, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't, if you are not saved this morning, you are a lost person. And when you die, you are going to hell. This is according to the Bible, which the Lord has used me to tell you this morning. I think that was the second last point the, the final point here is the joy of restitution restitution means that what was lost or stolen is brought back to the real owner the son was lost he was brought back to his father God will meet us halfway notice that son's father ran to meet him if you run to God he will meet you also In restitution, there is God's part, grace. He's giving you grace. Your part is to believe Jesus Christ died for your sin. He was buried and he rose on the third day. We can be assured that our Heavenly Father will do the same. God is God of compassion. He's very merciful. He's very kind. He, is, he has sympathy for you, empathy for you, Jairus. God continually looked for his children to come home. He is hurt by the separation. God forgives when we repent. He will give you that robe. And uh, the son is a beautiful reminder that God forgives the sinners. The son goes to the father, father forgives and they reunite. There are many lessons to be learned from this parable. God seeks and receives sinners. Man is responsible for his lost condition. The reason why you are lost, you don't want to listen. A 
a lost man can come to God if he so desires. Separation from God brings suffering. Life apart from God is a waste. We must be poor in spirit to return to Lord. A good family can have children that go astray. Material things can blind us. Foolish decision while you are young can cause sorrows and trouble. The allurement of the world will cause many to be lost. And there are many hawk pangs in this life we need to avoid. And I request you this hour, if the Lord has spoken to you this morning, we will close here, but before we close, I want you to bow, bow your head and close your eyes. And those people who want to receive Lord Jesus Christ can lift their hands and someone will come and speak to you. Maybe I will come and speak to you. Brother Deva can come and speak to you about Lord Jesus Christ and you can get saved and start a new life. So let's bow our head and I'll pray. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you again, Lord Father, with this great message you have given us. Lord, we thank you that, that your word corrects us and gives directions, Lord Father. This invitation, Lord Father, your invitation is open 24-7, 365 days, Lord, that anyone, anyone who, who is lost, your doors are open, Lord. And you are waiting with open arms to welcome that lost sinner. The robes, you are ready to give them your robes, Lord Father. Lord, I pray for that sinner who is lost and on its way to hell, Lord Father. Help him or help her, Lord Father. Thank you for this message. Father, bless thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.